In this movie, the first application movie of the special effects section, we'll take a look at using imported 3D. Now it's very important to understand, especially if you're coming from a background with computer 3D or CG type of work in your history, that while Anime Studio Pro can handle some 3D elements, it in no way should be confused with a full 3D application. You can work with OBJ files and do some moderate or I should say even minor types of animation with the 3D content. You just don't have the flexibility that you do with broader 3D applications. But what we'll be looking at is how and why and different methods for working with 3D in Anime Studio Pro. Now the program itself comes with some 3D already made. We've got some 3D animals and some 3D movies. Let's go ahead and play with something like, oh gosh, how about a baby walrus? Now the first thing we'll notice is that it takes a little while to bring in this content. It's actually importing some other data and data saved in a couple of locations. We'll look at where that is when we get into some of our next sections and how to work with your own 3D models if you have programs that can export to these formats. The formats and the only format that Anime Studio Pro respects is an OBJ format. Sometimes that's also called a wavefront format for wavefront object. We've got a 3D poly mesh in here and since there is only one object with this we're going to insert that primary object. I'll select OK. And there's our walrus in the scene. If we go ahead and do a quick render, Command R on the Mac or Control R on the PC, we'll notice that we're seeing exactly that. There is no real enhancement. Pretty much what you see is what you get when you bring in 3D content. There's some special things I want to take a look at. And first, I'm going to make sure that my viewing details are set up to anti-aliasing at the moment. We'll come over here and just like we would with any other layer in the Layers palette, I'll go ahead and open our options there and come on right over to the 3D area. We have some very limited types of options to work with right here. We've got polygon orientation and if you don't come from a 3D background, don't panic. Let's cover these. The polygon is actually little mesh cells that make up the actual geometry of this character right here or this walrus. I'm sure you've seen images of wireframe type of 3D renders where you see people except it looks like they're made out of wires or something. Well that's exactly how this is put together. Polygon orientation you will typically want to leave in the default setting which is counterclockwise. If we switch this and if I select OK we'll notice that all of a sudden the textures look wrong and that's because they are. We're telling the program to go ahead and map the textures onto these polygons differently than was intended. So some things are turning inside out. It just doesn't look good. Let's go ahead and bring up our options again. And we'll go back to counterclockwise. Edge offset is the cartoony look you can add to 3D content. So if you wanted to bring in a sphere or a cube or some basic element like that or something much more complex you can still add a comic book type of outline. Now typically when you import 3D content this already has a setting of, and I'll put it in here now, 0 0.05. We'll select OK and we see this kind of dark edge that goes around it. What the program is doing now is it's looking at the polygons and going, oh, here's where a bunch of them come together, or oh, here's an edge, and it draws a line there. To make that a little more significant, we can go ahead and come back in here, and we can say, oh, I want something like 0.2. And I really don't want black. Maybe I want something like red. So you do have the options to change the basic default color and the edge color. If we select OK now, we can see that at point 2, we've got simply too much of that going on, and we could fine-tune it. But that's what that's there for, to give it a little bit more of a cell shader type of look. Back in our 3D options, I'll go ahead and set this back down to something a little more reasonable, like maybe point zero 0.08. Now here's something to call your attention to, warp using bones. Now, as I would mentioned at the very outset of this, Anime Studio Pro is not a 3D package where you can go ahead and 
animate people moving their arms back and forth in 3D space. It just doesn't quite work like that. However, there are some ways to work with bones, but it takes a little bit of a setup here. And let's take a look at that now. I'll go ahead and convert this back to a black color. We'll select OK. And now we've got a fine white line going around that, or black line, I mean. Well, how do you add bones to this? This is going to be a little bit of a complex step. So again, if you haven't looked at some of the other movies in the series, you'll need to do that now because I'm going to be skipping some of the basic parts. The first thing we need to do is work with the layer and get the walrus pointing right at us. So let's do that. I'll go ahead and grab our layer rotation tool, the X tool, and I'm going to do this just by eye. I'm going to have the walrus looking straight, straight at us. Then I'll grab the Layer Move tool, and actually I'm going to reset the center of this right to the center of our walrus, so that we know that this arrow that tells us where the center of the layer is will remain at the true center of the walrus itself. Now we go ahead and add our bone layer. And here's where things get a little particular. Let's pick this up in our next movie.